guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tia. And I'm Ebony. And this is Reacting to, to the Internet. internet. Yeah. All right, guys. We know why we're here. You know why you're here. You saw the title. You click on the thumbnail. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So we, today we are going to be reacting to a video by Culture Spill. And it's titled, Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle Team Up to Expose Tyler Perry's Sick Ways. Mm. Let's go ahead and get into it. Title, eh? that generates money yeah people have a vested interest in control isn't it just unfortunate that while people like tyler perry are the ones who are supposed to be helping others they are the ones being accused of destroying black entertainers well people like dave chappelle and cat williams have been spilling about this for years and it always happens around the time of their career where it seems as though they're crossing over the next plateau yeah yeah and we're not going to be nobody favorite and we're going to miss out on a lot of the things that they're going to get over there because we're not like them and we don't do what they do we're not willing to do the things they're willing to do. I mean, I have personally heard a couple of stories about how Tyler Perry is a pop. So, I mean, I feel like to a certain extent, Cat Williams has a point because it's just certain people that seemingly do come out of nowhere. And I know a lot of people like to say they've been grinding at this their whole life. They've been doing this their whole life. But sometimes I really do feel like people mm. just be popping out of nowhere and all of a sudden they're super famous. That's just how I feel. And I feel like they get super famous because mm. they are willing to do the things that the people who have the talent and the integrity, et cetera, et cetera, are not willing to do. Mm. Like Cat Williams literally just fell off, the, like fell off. He mm. was one of the biggest comedians in the world and he just fell off and guys stay off drugs. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was on drugs oh, or what. Um, he was on a little some. I don't think that was the main cause, but he was. Did on... he admit it? Yeah, he was doing oh, coke. Okay. He was doing some he was doing coke. Okay, but he, I mean, he, he just like fell completely off, and then after he fell completely off, who did we see take off? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. I'm not saying that Kevin Hart did not do what he needed to do. I'm not saying that he wasn't in the trenches doing what needed to be done. But I'm saying he didn't I, blow up though. He blew up, like blew up like movie crazy. deals, TV networks, like all kinds of all kinds of stuff, and it really did seem like it came out of nowhere. And so hearing Cat Williams say this is like, damn, is that what happened? Like he really wasn't willing to do what they wanted him to do. It's highly weird, man. That's that's kind of weird, but let's get back into it hungry man who would do anything to have his way for instance brandon j went viral on tiktok after posting a video exposing tyler perry for pressuring him into playing a gay character brandon was cast in tyler perry's sitcom meet the browns but according to brandon tyler perry decided to make last minute changes to the script not considering that they were expected to film the entire episode in a day mr perry comes in everything changes so we literally run the entire episode for him and he hates it does that mean i have to learn a whole new script yes that's what it means and that wasn't even the worst part the shot came that's when possible. tyler perry told him that now, I'm not in the industry. Are you in the industry? Mm -mm. I don't know anybody who's in the industry, but don't scripts change? Mm -hmm. Like, I get if, like, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I just naturally assume that sometimes script change. Like, sometimes they'll see the words and play out and it's on camera and it's like, no, nah, this ain't working for me. So they'll go in and they'll change things up. Like sometimes they'll completely change your character. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, is that really unheard of? I don't think changing the script is too much. My, my sister does like some acting and stuff like that. So I don't think it's like unheard of to change parts of the script. Like, hey, maybe say this line like this, or maybe, you know, let's take this line out, whatever. That's the purpose of the read, just to see kind of like how it, how it goes. Yeah. However, to change an entire character is out of, um, kind of out of pocket, especially since he said they were still expected to film in the day. Mm, I guess. So, yeah. I mean, that, is, that's, that does sound like a lot of work. Like, you want to change the character, change the script, refilm everything all in one day. Right. That seemed like a lot. That seemed like a, a 24 hour day, and I just don't have that kind of time. So, I understand what he's saying. All right, let's get back into it. 
that his character would be gay and have a crush on the person who made his life in high school like miserable. Him. Mr. Perry on the spot starts rewriting the entire script and he's feeding me the lines to say and the director is kind of standing on the side like you better do it because if not they will fire you. Here is where the shoe hit the fan. So in the middle of Mr. Perry changing up the scenes he says you know I want Jeffrey to be gay and he has a crush on his bully. That's not what I auditioned for. So this is just one person who was bold enough to tell Let's their story. Now imagine in the Stockholm Syndrome is this. Mm -hmm. My man said, I want the character to be gay, which is fine, but he has a crush on his bully. The Meet the Browns is not that kind of show. Mm. Yeah, that's true. What? That's just bad writing. That is bad writing. And I don't he kind of look like a chubby Tyler oh, Perry, so maybe maybe i don't know like that's just bad writing that's bad writing and i don't really think that's for his targeted audience mm -mm. because that's not what meet the browns is about i've i've seen two or three episodes on youtube or whatever but um no that's that's that's, that's that's bad writing so yeah i would be upset at that too i'm like not playing this dumb ass character mm -hmm. let's get back into it and what other cast and crew members have to go through while being expected to film an entire episode in a day. Come to think of it, no wonder many of his productions always seem to be rushed with mistakes here and there. Also, Tyler Perry has also been called out for devaluing <laughs> black women's education, status, and any related claims of entitlement. It's like he always has an agenda of sending the message that educated, successful black women automatically have a bitter, demanding, and unworthy disposition. Um, I don't know if Tyler Perry doesn't like Let's black women or doesn't give a I agree. In almost every Tyler Perry movie I have seen, especially Diary of a Mad Black Woman, I can do bad all by myself, uh, etc., etc. He even did one with Tanaya Lathan, and I can't think of the name of it. But all the women in those movies that were successful, black, um, power, powerful, you know, high up in the hierarchy, etc., etc., all of them had bad attitudes. Mm -hmm. Bad attitudes. They couldn't keep a man, didn't get a man, etc., etc. Like the world had, has done them wrong. And I'm just, I'm not here for it. I feel like Hollywood does that enough to black women. And it's very disheartening to see a black man do it as well. Like, I get it. You, you made your billions of dollars some way, right? And I personally believe that nobody who's worth a billion dollars is for the people period so i get it but it's like dang you can't be for the culture and not even attempt to uplift the black women in the culture he putting black he's putting money in black people's pockets he's putting money it's like i feel like it's a crack dealer who's selling crack in the community but then turn around and do something special on thanksgiving day mm. that's kind of how i feel about it I feel like this, I feel like everybody was kind of like shining on our, our light just because it is Tyler Perry, but mm -hmm. they know nobody's in the uproar when all these other white directors and all these other people who write black stories or narratives do the exact same thing. And I think that's what, that's what it is. Like we expect that from them, but we don't act like it though. We not on here talking about you know, Steven Spielberg, I don't even know if he ever written, you know what I'm saying? But I feel <laughs> we're like- not doing, We're not doing, we're doing it on Tyler Perry because he's black. Yeah, and because he's black, I feel like if you're gonna be about the culture, then be about the culture. Don't say that you're about the culture when you're really not about the culture. I feel like a lot of people like to pretend that they're about the culture because let's be honest, black American dollars do make the world go round. Like, there, yeah, there's a lot of, it's a lot of power in the black dollar, in American dollar, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of power in that, right? But I feel like he doesn't take on any of the responsibility to show us as more than the angry black woman, which is the stereotype that's already been placed on us. But then in the same breath turns around and say, oh, I'm for the culture. I bail, blah, 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 and so out of jail. Okay. okay. But you're also making billions of dollars by um, exploiting. by exploiting the black community and just making us look terrible. 
Like, you have a perfect platform to uplift people, to truly do that, and you're just not doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not a Tyler Perry fan, as you guys can tell. I'm just not. But let's get back into it. They have a blog about black women or thinks he knows black women, but these storylines that he's concocting that's supposed to be the story of black women are so idiotic, I cannot take it anymore. When it comes to men, Tyler also portrays the successful black man as evil and or having no desire for the successful black woman. Just look at Diary of a Mad Black Woman, for instance, where the black woman married to the successful black attorney is physically and verbally mistreated and ultimately chased out of her home and replaced by a white woman. The successful black man is naturally evil and hateful. In Daddy's Little Girls, the lead black woman is a highly successful and beautiful black woman, but with a bad attitude and no man. And when she finds love, she finds it in her limo driver. The same also happens in The Family That Prays, where the lead black woman is again a highly successful Ivy League educated VP of a company and she's married to a construction worker but ends up having an affair with her white boss. Even in I Can Do Bad All By Myself, the lead black woman finds awesome. love in the form of a jobless immigrant who lives in her basement. And if you watched The Haves and The Have Nots, you probably noticed that people were taken advantage of a bit too much. I mean, Wyatt's character was molested when he was younger. And then the same thing happened in prison. His sister, Hannah, Candace, Jeffrey all went through the same thing. And let me not even begin with the Medea movies with all the problematic plot points or the colorism in many of Tyler Perry's productions. Allegedly, when Tyler Perry is not There's degrading black men and women in his colorism. Hmm. The colorism and, he, and, the, and the fact that, yes, in most of all of Tyler Perry's movies, the successful black guy, man, does not want to be with the successful black woman. Like, he doesn't want to be with a black woman. Or they, or the successful black woman can't find a successful black man she has to lower her standards not saying that mm. these things you know not saying that hey dating someone who doesn't have the same job title or doesn't make as much money as you is not possible just looking at it from a different standpoint if i am a successful lawyer why is it that i have to find love with a jobless immigrant like they stated or a jobless person or a jobless man whatever situation may be like why can't she have someone of another black man who's on the same level as her instead the black woman has to uh what's the word i'm looking for the black woman has to lower her standards settle. or has to settle almost mm -hmm. and then the black man he is somehow not lowering his standards because he is dating outside of his race what i'm not here for it let's get back into children productions he is doing it to them in real life in collaboration with other hollywood elites and that is how he is able to survive in these streets well if you ask dave chappelle and cat williams monique is one of those people tyler perry did dirty together with oprah when you don't do what we ask you to do yeah. we'll take your livelihood so for eight years for eight years my family has suffered and my career has suffered because what I would not allow those entities to do was bully me. What happened was that Monique signed on to do the movie Precious with Lee Daniels. Then Tyler Perry and Oprah got involved and became executive producers of the movie. Monique said that the movie had been filmed and as far as she was concerned, she'd fulfilled her contractual agreements. However, according to her, Tyler Perry, Oprah, and Lee Daniels wanted her to attend the festivals, award ceremonies, and events linked to Precious. But she said she wasn't going to work for free. And because of that, she was labeled difficult to work with and blackballed in Hollywood. In fact, Dave himself has been a victim of the sick ways orchestrated by the likes of Tyler Perry. And for those. So. She won an Oscar for that. She did. She did. She delivered an Oscar too because she played the hell out of Precious Mom. Yeah, she played the hell out of Precious Mom. I don't remember her name in the movie, but. Precious Mom. I know. See, she got your degree. Got your college degree. You know everything. I remember that part. Oh, wow. But, um, she did. She murdered that role. And I like Monique. I believed her when the story first came out eight, ten years ago. I believe that's exactly what they were doing. And as far as she stated, if her contract stated that all she had to do was film the movie and that's it, I wouldn't be going on press tours either. Because at this point, she's already a star. It but, was. Yeah, I mean, one, I love Monique. And mm -hmm. I think that she's her. her as authentic as you probably can get, mm -hmm. right? And I think she speaks her mind, mm -hmm. despite whoever she's talking to. I believed her as well whenever it first came out. However, I also believe in good business, business too. Mm -hmm. So, yes, 
you know, if her contract said this to this time, right? But you want something to do well, you're going to put energy into it, I think. I think you should put energy into it. So if I want my, my movie to be successful, I'm going to invest probably some time into maybe going to a award show just so I can promote the movie that I'm in. It's going it's nothing going to do nothing but add more to my pockets. No, I understand that, and I get that. But at this point in time, I feel like that's more so the producer's responsibility, and it's more so it was I think her the actors who played the actor who played Precious I think her name was Gabby, yeah. and I feel like that's more so a her thing because it was literally her breakout role. I get it, but who the hell is the producer? Who the hell care about them people? We want to see Tyler Perry. I'm and saying we want to see. I'm saying we want to see the people that sit the movie. We don't give a damn about who made it i want to see the actors and the actresses and i would think that i don't really care who wrote it i do have a question though like leonardo dicaprio when that his last movie came out right did he do a promotional like did he go to press tours and i only say leonardo dicaprio because he's a huge star and by the time like he got later on in his career I can't personally remember him doing any major press tours for any other, like any movie. I feel like that's something that you do when you're young in your career and you don't really have the the stardom power. But I can't, like, Leonardo DiCaprio, I can't know. I'm Think about who you naming, though. But I, that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying these people have won multiple. It doesn't, that's what I'm saying, though. I'm saying. It, that's why I, I feel like Monique did what she what she felt like she needed to do. Mm. Because at the time, she was a big star when Precious came out. She had just come off. I don't know if she just came off of the Parkers, but maybe a little mm -hmm. bit years after that. I don't, I don't know. You don't know? Well, I think Monique is a star. A queen of comedy. But that's so old. She's not a movie star. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Like, Monique is a star, right? I see. When, even at that point, she wasn't an A-list celebrity, though. If you name it somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio, Monique is not an A-list actress. But I'm, all, all I'm saying is, we're going to get back into the video. All oh. I'm saying is, I don't remember Leonardo DiCaprio going on promotional tours and doing this other stuff for his movies. I don't remember him doing that. We comparing apples to oranges. I don't think so. I think so. I really but. don't. I feel like if you're if you fulfilled your contract obligations, you failed, you did this, and you want to go and be with your family, and you want to go do other stuff with your time, then I feel like you should be free to do that, and nobody should have a problem to do it. Like yeah, like you said, it's cool to want to do it in good business and good faith, but if you don't want to, I don't really feel like you need to. You need to be obligated, and you need to be pressured into doing that because. She, you know, may have wanted to go spend that time with her family. Who knows? Maybe so. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Let's get ready to do it. To recall, he left the production of season three of Chappelle's show and took a trip to South Africa. And soon after, there were claims about him being mentally unstable and on drugs. Well, Dave repeatedly denied those claims and said at the time, I'm not crazy. I'm not smoking crack. I'm definitely stressed out. There were things that overwhelmed me, but not in the way that people are saying. He actually said the same thing to Oprah, which was a huge mistake, considering Oprah and Tyler Perry are cut from the same cloth. And Oprah only tried to make Dave look crazy. Would you say you lost your mind, sort of? No. No. Not exactly. Okay. Uh, I wasn't crazy, but it is incredibly stressful. And can I just mention how Tyler Perry is one of those who has championed for effeminating black men, allegedly. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress, at some point in their career, I'll be connecting that dots. Okay, Cat Williams was once asked about how black actors are being forced to wear dresses on screen in reference to how Kevin Hart wore a dress on this SNL. Is the new pope is... So, I don't like Oprah either. Um, I don't like Oprah because when... I feel what Dave is saying, right? When he went on her show, all she did... I remember that interview. All she did was try to make it seem like he was crazy. He lost his mind, etc., etc. And not really hearing what he was saying about why he went to Africa. So, when all that stuff was going on with Harvey Weinstein, right? Oprah had nothing to say. Like, she didn't have squat to say. Because they were cool, right? And then when all that stuff came out about R. Kelly, she went on a whole press tour. I think she even produced Surviving R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she did or not, but I think she did. 
she went on this whole thing like the, the just destroying this dude's legacy. Don't get me wrong, R. Kevin did do what he do. All I'm saying is he did he did do what he did. All I'm saying is make it even, make it fair. Because Harvard did the same thing. It worse. And there was nothing. R. Kelly got found out or whatever situation that happened with him. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I'm going to produce a movie. I'm going to do interviews. I'm going to go talk to the victims. I'm going to do X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. So I really do feel like she also has a hand in uh, like painting black men in a very negative image. And I saw her do that with Dave Chappelle, which was that, that hurt because I love Dave Chappelle. Mm. I love him. I even paid three thousand dollars almost to go see him perform when he came to Dallas for his new Netflix special. That's love. Mm -hmm. Be fair. Be fair. Let's get back into it. The Oscar nominee, <laughs> Convention A. Wallace. Wow. <laughs> wow! 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 I don't think anyone saw this one coming. According to Kat, at least Kevin didn't have to worry, because people like Tyler Perry paved that way. At the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress-wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. Kat has even said before that probably the reason why people like him and Dave Chappelle are not making it like other entertainers is because they refused to bow and join secret societies. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. Nobody likes them. Basically, what Kat was also saying was that the likes of Tyler Perry sold their souls. Mm -hmm. And because he ended up being one of the most successful men in Hollywood, he's also started oppressing those who've refused to be controlled. Clearly, Tyler Perry has amassed a fortune and has the means and ability to help further the careers of writers and other creatives, which is the very thing many young and old black movie creatives complain about. Yet, That's some say he refuses saying. to share. And I'm, I'm just saying... I'm just saying because not only is everything written by Tyler Perry, it's acted by Tyler Perry, produced in the Tyler Perry studios, sound, lights, audio tracks by Tyler Perry. <laughs> everything is done by Tyler Perry. My God, please pass the pass the pen. Pete, please pass the pen. The, <laughs> Pete, please, please pass, pass the, the pen. pen. <laughs> please. Like, just let somebody else take over. For I mean, a while. I agree. I can agree with that notion that, yeah, okay, maybe he needs to share some writing, you know, you know, the writing wealth around a little bit. You know, Issa Rae does that. She has co writers and things like that. She, she put other people on. And, and, and that's why Instagram was such a great show. It was good. Was mm -hmm. It was good. Yeah, he. Just do. Just do. Just do. He's a billionaire. That's true. He's, I mean, he didn't you get don't to be become a billionaire by sharing wealth. No. So that's I how everybody that's wealthy that I know or got money, a lot of money, they don't spend it on frivolous things, and they don't share it too often. So that's true. I'm just saying it should be a, a lesson to the not not that you just keep stuff to yourself. That's not the lesson, but the lesson is be mindful of what you do invest and spend your money and time into. So, nobody's a billionaire if that's nice. That's true. I just don't see it, but. Yeah, let's get back into it. And uplift them. In fact, he does a lot of harm in the process, allegedly. Well, maybe, just maybe, Tyler Perry is also projecting something that is happening in his life. And Cat Williams said that it's very likely that it's the case. I don't have any hatred in my heart for Tyler Perry because he works hard. Well, he is a drag queen. Let's be very honest, a drag queen is somebody who works in drag. I've heard some stories myself, but like I always say, I don't see an issue with anyone being in the closet. But when people start projecting their fantasies and using that as an excuse to act in some pretty sick ways, that's where the problem comes in. And it's even worse when we're talking about a successful man like Tyler Perry, who has the power to be a positive influence, but to many, doesn't seem to do much to change the narrative. So is it because he's sucking up to the people Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams have been talking about for years? Do you also believe that Tyler Perry has some sort of agenda? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Hmm. All right. 
and that was that. I don't know. I really do feel like Medea, the Medea character, should have been played by an actual grandmother. That like, makes sense. That makes I sense. I, I mean, uh, I get it. That could have been the angle he went. Yeah, I don't understand why he had to be Medea in a dress. But you know, a lot of I was noticing this the other day when I was looking on social media. Like a lot of black men, like portray black women like they'll put a wig on and pretend to be somebody's mama they'll, you know what i'm saying they'll, they always they do that a lot like if you look on mm -hmm. the instagram it's always a man pretending to be a black man pretending to be a black woman in some type of way it'd be funny don't get me wrong because some mm -hmm. of the stuff it do be true and it'd be funny yeah but i'm like mm, I, I don't know i just know where up with that but I feel like when I look at some of those things, like some of those guys, they are obviously a part of the LBGTQA community. And the black woman is probably the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exaggerated and flamboyant no, personality no. type? No. When you always, someone sought always copies. Mimic, uh, sought after. Yeah, it could be a couple of things. When she, like she. Mimic. The most mimic. The most mimic creature on the face of the earth, right? Like we. We invented so many things and just so many sayings and we just we're funny we're funny we're we're okay, charismatic right? and so i feel like a lot of the, like i said before a lot of the guys who imitate women on social media some of them are part of the lbgtqia community and that's great we love you hello um but a lot of the guys that are straight completely who, straight completely straight <laughs> do that and I, I i look at sometimes i look at it as a gesture of paying homage or homage, mm -hmm. however you say it, to their mother. Because it's like so many times it's like the things my mom used to say to me when I was a kid and like a lot of it is coming from a place of love and amar amaration. Amaration. Ad admiration. admiration. <laughs> Got you. Um, I am messing the words <laughs> today. A lot of it is coming from a place of admiration. It's coming from a place of goodness. And they're just, they're mimicking the strong women in their families. And because, you know, you did get our butts toe up. You know, your mom, if you from the culture, you're from the community, your mom had a lot of sayings. Mm -hmm. Grandparents had a lot of sayings. It's thundering and lightning out there, cutting them lights off. What you doing? Mm -hmm. And so it's always incredible to see that in this, like, in this Instagram or the internet space because so many of us have the same shared experiences. Like how many of us, we know what certain words mean. We know what be home before the street light mean, comes on mean. Mm -hmm. We know what, it's just, it's so incredible to see how so many of us was taught the same lessons, almost the exact same way, although we never met a day in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I love, love, love to see that on mm -hmm. social media. But um, yeah, anyways, we I digress. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, et cetera, et cetera. But let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. And until next time, peace.